any questions related to posterior triangle and the previous classes okay so let's go ahead we had discussed about posterior triangle and uh, in this session we are going to talk about anterior triangle anterior triangle can come as a long question 10 mark question and in anterior triangle there are very uh, you know uh, small questions many small questions which can come as short note questions also out of anterior triangle only carotid triangle can be asked as a long question to you so uh, you have to keep in mind that it's a part of anterior triangle and it can be asked separately also okay so long question is expected from this unit or the chapter now in this particular picture we already seen that the neck is divided into two sides by the mid lines and we had seen that the one half of the neck is again divided by sternocleidomastoid okay sternocleidomastoid into two triangles this is the anterior triangle this is the posterior triangle okay in last class we had seen about the posterior triangle today we are going to study about anterior triangle now let us understand what are the midline structures first when we are talking about the boundaries of anterior triangle first let us understand the basic boundaries medially on each half of the neck this is the anterior triangle medially anterior midline of the neck anterior midline of the neck base is formed by the jaw okay lower jaw base of the mandible from the mental protuberance to the angle of the mandible and an imaginary line see here mental protuberance to the angle of the jaw and an imaginary line connecting from the angle of the jaw till the mastoid process so from here to here is the base of the anterior triangle okay medially what border anterior midline of the neck posteriorly we have got anterior border of sternocleidomastoid okay so this is the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid apex is formed where sternal head of the sternocleidomastoid meeting the sternum and anterior midline so this is the notch we will see a sternal notch a depression just above the sternum so this sternal notch where the midline and the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid is meeting so this forms the apex of anterior triangle what are the midline structures of the neck let us have a look at them first we always start from the mental protuberance this is the mental protuberance then we have only important structures we are discussing not the skin and fascia remember that so if we remove of skin and fascia we are going to see these structures mental protuberance then we have median fibrous raphe raphe is the thickened ligament called thickened ligament which is called as raphe into which both the sides of the muscles forming the floor of the oral cavity this is the floor of the oral cavity so here we have got two muscles those are called as mylohyoid muscles we will see in the next coming pictures they both are getting attached to the anterior midline okay median fibrous raphe after that that median fibrous raphe is ending at the body of hyoid bone this is the hyoid bone here we can see hyoid bone this is the body of hyoid bone then we see a membrane which is between the hyoid bone and the thyroid cartilage this is called as thyrohyoid membrane okay so this is called as thyrohyoid membrane next to that we have got thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid cartilage 
and thyroid cartilage has got lamina you can see the lamina here so we can see that lamina is present on both sides both lamina joins together in the angle of the thyroid cartilage this elevation usually we refer to as adam's apple in males we can see very nicely the angle is more protruded okay so that gives the difference in the voice voice production in males okay so you can see the angle of the thyroid cartilage is the angle next to that in the midline we will see a membrane which connects the thyroid cartilage from the cricoid cartilage this is called as cricothyroid membrane okay cricothyroid membrane then we will see next cartilage this is the next cartilage this is called as cricoid cartilage okay what is it called as cricoid cartilage we have hyoid bone thyrohyoid membrane thyroid cartilage cricothyroid membrane cricoid cartilage next to that we have got many rings of trachea okay these are all the rings of trachea tracheal rings and on the surface of tracheal rings what do we have we have got thyroid gland okay so first two rings covered by the isthmus of the thyroid gland isthmus means the narrowest portion of the thyroid gland so thyroid gland has got two lobes okay right and left lobe both are connected by an narrow portion of the thyroid gland on the anterior aspect of the trachea that is called as isthmus of the thyroid gland so this next to the isthmus we have only tracheal rings and this point is called as jugular notch okay this is called as jugular notch or it is also called as sternal notch excuse me guys one second okay so this is the midline structures of the neck region so it starts from the mental protuberance till the jugular notch see here at the jugular notch or the sternal notch it is not covered by any muscle any structures or vessels so here this is the uh, free area where you can directly approach the trachea so when a patient is Uh, in coma or uh, cannot uh, uh, directly breathe so that time we need to do an tracheal intubation tracheal intubation means when the nasal uh, uh, cavity and the oral cavity is completely blocked and the person cannot breathe so that time we are making a small slit in the trachea and keep an tracheal tube inside and give an artificial breathing from outside okay so this is called as tracheal intubation so this can be done at this region at the jugular notch where the trachea is very very superficial okay so i hope all of you are clear with the midline structures of the neck any questions till here yes okay so here you can see see here mental protuberance median fibrous raphe you can see this muscle mylohyoid muscle okay on both sides these two muscles are forming the floor of the oral cavity okay and hyoid bone is at the junction of the oral cavity and the neck region uh, in between the oral cavity and the neck exactly the junction is having the hyoid bone okay this is the bone rest of all are cartilages okay so these are the midline structures now let us see what are the subdivisions of the anterior triangle you know what is anterior triangle what are the boundaries of anterior triangle now we are going for subdivisions of anterior triangle okay now see there are some muscles which form boundaries okay which form boundaries now let us see those muscles in detail these two bellies are called as digastric muscle okay we have got two bellies 
that is anterior belly of digastric and posterior belly of digastric di two gastric bellies so two bellies are there for this muscle what are the muscles anterior belly of digastric posterior belly of digastric okay then in the posterior triangle we have already seen this muscle if you remember this is the omohyoid muscle okay the red colored area that is the omohyoid muscle it has got two bellies superior belly and inferior belly inferior belly is going to the posterior triangle dividing it into occipital triangle and the subclavian triangle now superior belly is present in the anterior triangle now see here this anterior triangle is subdivided into four small triangles okay what are the four small triangles we will see that now what you can do you can draw the diagrams and you can label them you will, you will understand what are the diagrams you now how these triangles are divided if you have textbook with you you can open your textbook and look into the pictures of the textbook okay see here what are the different triangles we will see that now first let us understand this triangle okay the triangle which is present between the two bellies of digastric and the base of the mandible this is the base of the mandible anterior belly posterior belly so this is one triangle okay so this is called as digastric triangle or it is also called as submandibular triangle okay what is it called as digastric triangle or submandibular triangle okay because we have got digastric muscles on either side and we have got submandibular gland here okay so this triangle is called as submandibular triangle i hope all of you are clear here everyone yes ma'am yes. if you don't understand anything please concentrate these are very important okay there is no paper without a question from anterior triangle okay at least one question is minimum from anterior triangle in any question paper so this is one of the most important topic what are the subdivisions first we had studied this is called as uh, uh, digastric triangle or it is also called as submandibular triangle okay what are the boundaries antero inferiorly means inferior means below so this is and or you can just say anterior also anteriorly anterior belly of digastric posteriorly posterior belly of digastric base is formed by the base of the mandible okay this is one triangle next triangle is in between these structures okay you can see this here also anterior belly is there so but we removed this from here okay we have removed the anterior belly of digastric from this side to show the underlying muscles okay so between two anterior bellies we have this triangle okay what is this triangle this is called as submental triangle what is it called as submental triangle what do you mean by submental triangle what are the boundaries both sides okay laterally both sides we have anterior belly of digastric okay base is formed by the body of hyoid bone apex is formed where at the mental protuberance posterior aspect of mental protuberance where two anterior belly of digastric muscles are meeting okay so this region is called as submental triangle okay all of you clear with this guys answer clear with the uh, submental triangle yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma okay so submental triangle digastric triangle and next you have studied this muscles okay see here omohyoid superior belly and inferior belly 
Now between the posterior belly of digastric, superior belly of homohyoid, and sternocleidomastoid. Okay, antero superiorly superior belly of digastric. Sorry, a uh, posterior belly of digastric. Antero inferiorly. That means what we are doing? We are just studying anterior border, posterior border. In anterior, we have two parts. Antero superior, antero inferior. That's it. Okay. Antero superiorly, what do we have? We have got posterior belly of digastric muscle. Antero inferiorly, we have got superior belly of homohyoid. Posteriorly, we have got anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So this triangle is the most important triangle. Why? Because all our structures are here. Okay. This triangle is called as carotid triangle. Okay. What is it called as? Carotid triangle. Next, we have this region from the anterior midline. Okay. Anterior border of sternocleidomastoid and superior belly of homohyoid. Okay, so from here, this region. Okay, so this is called as muscular triangle. Okay, what are the boundaries of muscular triangle? Anteriorly, we have got anterior midline of the neck. Posterior superiorly. Now we are talking about posterior border. Okay. This is the posterior border. In posterior border, we have superior and inferior. Okay? So, posterior superiorly, superior belly of homohyoid. Posterior inferiorly, we have anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Okay? So, this is called as muscular triangle. Okay? What is it called as? Muscular triangle. So, in anterior triangle, basically... Anterior triangle is divided into four different triangles. What are the four different triangles? Submental triangle, submandibular triangle, okay, carotid triangle, and muscular triangle. Okay. So these are the four separate triangles in anterior triangle. All of you are clear with this? Ma'am, can you please repeat all the triangles? Submental triangle. Okay, this is the submental triangle. This region is called as digastric triangle or submandibular triangle. This region is called as muscular triangle. And this region is called as carotid triangle. Okay. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now let us understand each triangle. Okay. Out of this submandibular triangle, we will study in submandibular region. Okay. It's a long question. We will study this region separately. Okay. Now, submental triangle. We'll go back. This is the submental triangle. What are the boundaries? Anterior midline. Or you can say the space between the two anterior bellies of digastric. Okay. Base is formed by the hyoid bone. Apex is where two anterior bellies of digastric are meeting at mental protuberance. Okay. Sorry, not mental protuberance. Symphysis menti. Okay. Symphysis menti. Now, what is the roof floor? All triangles you are going to write what is the boundary, what is the roof, what is the floor, and then contents. What is the roof? Roof is formed by skin, superficial fascia. Okay, superficial fascia contains cutaneous nerves. Which cutaneous nerves are coming in anterior triangle? Transverse cervical cutaneous nerve. Right? And a small portion of supraclavicular nerves and greater 
auricular nerves okay great auricular nerve so these are the cutaneous nerves in posterior triangle we had studied that there are four cutaneous nerves out of that three cutaneous nerves also supply the area of superficial fascia and skin in anterior triangle okay and some small lymph nodes okay in superficial fascia we have cutaneous submental lymph nodes after that what do we have after clearing that once we remove skin superficial fascia then we get deep fascia what is the deep fascia called as here investing layer of deep cervical fascia okay investing layer of deep cervical fascia so that forms the roof of the triangle once we remove off the roof is same for all the triangles roof is same there is no difference okay then comes once we remove the roof then we enter into the triangles we will see the floor of the triangles okay so first let us understand the floor of submental triangle and digastric triangle in submental triangle and a part of digastric triangle together we can see this muscle okay the fibers are directed towards the midline okay so this is called as milo hyoid milo refers to the mandible and hyoid bone okay so these fibers forms the floor of the submental triangle and a part of submandibular triangle okay clear submental triangle roof floor everyone clear yes ma'am then what are what are the contents of submental triangle we have got submental artery okay submental artery and vein submental artery and vein these are the branches and tributary of facial artery okay all of you who had seen facial artery in the face so from the facial artery when the facial artery is entering into the face it gives off submental branches so this submental branches go to this region and supply the submental triangle okay and the little bit lymph nodes are present here okay whenever you have cold and cough the submental and submandibular lymph nodes get swollen right so that is the content of submental triangle all of you clear with submental triangle yes ma'am yes ma'am if the question comes anterior triangle and subdivisions okay question might be like this describe anterior triangle its boundaries and describe carotid triangle in detail okay so that can be a question or else the question can be directly like describe boundaries contents of carotid triangle so submental triangle you might have to write the boundaries and contents in one word answers clear everyone yes ma'am right so sub mandibular triangle boundaries i already told you roof everyone knows floor there are two muscles what are the two muscles we have got milo hyoid muscle and deep to that we have hyoglossus muscle what is it hyoglossus muscle see here what did we do on this side we have removed of milo hyoid muscle okay on this side we have removed of milo hyoid muscle you can see the next muscle hyoglossus from the hyoid bone to the glossus glossus means tongue okay this muscle is going to the sides of the tongue from the hyoid bone so these two muscles milo hyoid and hyoglossus will form the floor of the submandibular triangle okay 
so these are the two muscles which forms the floor of the submandibular triangle i hope all of you are clear with it then the contents of submandibular triangle basically here from the neck region what we can see we can see that submandibular gland is present okay submandibular gland and submandibular lymph nodes along with the facial artery okay along with the facial artery so these are the main contents but there are many other contents if you just go deep to it okay that is submandibular region we are not just studying submandibular triangle we are studying entire submandibular region that means we are extending going deeper back side and trying to study what are the various structures related to submandibular gland okay so that we are not doing right now what you need to know is just the boundaries and contents which we can see from the neck region that's all okay then next what is the next triangle this is the next triangle that is muscular triangle muscular triangle is easiest we have got only muscles okay what are the muscles which are present here these muscles are called as strap muscles of the neck what are these called as strap muscles of the neck strap muscles means what which are like strap okay straps means the straight muscles which are long okay which doesn't have any breaks these are called as strap muscles of the neck okay what are the muscles do we have in the strap muscles see here from the sternum to the hyoid bone okay this is called as sterno hyoid okay what are these muscles called as sterno hyoid from the sternum to the hyoid bone okay lift this we get next muscle sternothyroid okay see here on this side what did we do we removed of sternohyoid muscle this side we removed of sternohyoid muscle then we can see next group of muscles sterno thyroid okay till the thyroid cartilage from the thyroid to hyoid thyro hyoid okay what is it called as thyro hyoid so what are the strap muscles sterno hyoid lift the sterno hyoid then we can see sterno thyroid and thyro hyoid okay all of you i hope you are understanding i hope you are all listening to it okay what are the muscles we will see here only contents of this triangles are muscles that's why this triangle is called as muscular triangle okay what are the contents sterno hyoid lift that we will see sterno thyroid and thyro hyoid okay so these are the strap muscles of the neck i hope all of you are clear did you understand this yes, yes ma'am next the carotid triangle okay this is a long question what are the boundaries of carotid triangle all of you look in your textbook see the presentation okay what are the boundaries we already had seen the boundaries antero superiorly we have got posterior belly of digastric this is the posterior belly of digastric along with this muscle we have this muscle in dissection hall also you can see this muscle okay stylohyoid what is it from the styloid process to the hyoid bone we have this muscle stylohyoid what are the two muscles posterior belly of digastric and stylohyoid okay then antero inferiorly we have got superior belly of digast uh, omohyoid sorry not digastric superior belly of omohyoid okay this is inferior belly this is superior belly so antero superiorly antero inferiorly we have these muscles posteriorly we have anterior border of sternocleidomastoid okay this is called as anterior border of 
sternocleidomastoid this is the triangle which triangle carotid triangle in dissection hall you are supposed to look at this triangle okay first find out this borders identify the borders locate the carotid triangle look for the strap muscles look for the muscles which are forming the floor of submental and submandibular triangles once this is done what we will do next we will try to cut the sternocleidomastoid from its origin and reflect it upwards okay we are cutting it and removing it upwards so that we can see the contents of carotid triangle in very much detail okay fine so this is how we have to proceed for dissection now once we reflect the sternocleidomastoid then only we can see the contents of carotid triangle in detail what are the contents now look at the contents we have one basic structure called as carotid sheath what is it called as carotid sheath carotid sheath is a short note question very very important short note question okay what is the carotid sheath we will discuss that later okay what are the contents of it we will see it that means if i have to see the structures in the neck which structures carotid artery main vessels of the neck what i have to do i have to cut the carotid sheath which is covering this great vessels reflect the carotid sheath then only i can see these vessels of the neck great vessels of the neck what are the great vessels carotid sheath contains carotid group of arteries okay what are the group of arteries present carotid group of arteries uh, in that we have external common carotid internal carotid we will discuss that after this okay right now just understand that what do we have inside carotid sheath we have got carotid set of arteries then we have internal jugular vein this structure is called as internal jugular vein big vein okay so two an artery and a vein a big vessels these are present in the neck between these two what you are supposed to do just you know separate give a space between these two structures then you will see 10th cranial nerve what is the 10th cranial nerve vagus nerve okay vagus nerve so these are the main contents of the carotid sheath what are the contents carotid set of arteries internal jugular vein and we have got vagus nerve okay artery vein and nerve these are the contents of the carotid sheath all of you clear till here yes ma'am everyone all of you are quiet are you listening yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am people who are sleeping tell them they will have to if they, if they are not understanding this questions if they are not understanding these structures they cannot write exam it's going to be very difficult okay there are many structures in the carotid triangle what is the most important carotid sheath and its contents this is the submandibular triangle what are the contents submandibular gland facial artery submandibular lymph nodes which i cannot show you here okay other than that we have hypo